So that it's, is... a, it's a BBW, a big beautiful watch. Oh, I feel like I'm on a casting couch. I'm just gonna go with the moment. The 116500 Steel Daytona is one of the most hyped watches on the market. Yet, if you're considering spending anywhere between 25 to 50 thousand pounds for a Daytona, here's the watches you should consider buying. Welcome back to What's On Watches, and today we're talking special metal Rolex Daytonas. Now, before we start, remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already, it really helps us carry on bringing you these videos. And Tom, what are you wearing? I am wearing a rather beautiful Amiga Constellation from the 1960s. It's yeah, uh, stunning this one. Amiga, bead of rice bracelet. Lovely. Crosshair dial. Yep. Gold details. Yep. Now available at whatsonwatches.co.uk. I you am wearing... Yeah, go on, fine. <laughs> I'm wearing this beautiful <laughs> Rolex Datejust from 2005, now available in the Watts and Watches online watch shop. Rolex have a really rich history in producing tool watches. We've seen it with the Submariner, the Daytona. They create watches for situations, and these were actually created for racing. Rolex actually started producing chronographs in the 1930s. It was during this time that they produced their first ever chronograph, which was a single pusher chrono. It had a single pusher that was used to start, stop, and reset the movement. And during this time, they actually used Valjoux movements. In 1955, Rolex produced their first manual wind chronograph in an oyster case. The reference 6234 featured a tachymeter scale around the outside, much like the Daytona as we see today. A very useful tool for motor racers and pilots the like. Tool watches. From 1955 to 1961, Rolex produced about 2,300 pieces in stainless steel, and they produced around 150 pieces in 14 karat and 18 karat gold. However, the real father of the Daytona was the reference 6238, particularly the second series 6238. The daddy. The daddy. The daddy Daytona. That's not a nickname, I've just made it up. <laughs> the 6238 has a lot of style cues, very, very similar to slightly more modern Daytonas. Yeah. Smooth, out of bezel, button markers, and it had a case diameter of 37 millimeters. These still used Valju movements. Mm -hmm. However, Rolex then went on to modify these Valju yeah. movements and rebrand them as the 72B and the 722. These pieces ran with these movements from around 1965 to 1967. And did you know they were also worn in one of my favorite films? A James Bond film, perhaps. Shock and yeah, horror. Yeah. On Her Majesty's Secret Service with not the best Bond, but not a bad guy, George Lazenby. This never happened to the other guy. In 1963, Rolex introduced the first Cosmograph Daytona reference 6239. And the characteristics of this watch was its stainless steel bezel with a tachymeter, stainless steel to improve legibility on the dial, and its panda dial or reverse panda dial. The Rolex Cosmograph Daytona was not immediately referred to in that name. It was originally called the Le Mans. It was called the Le Mans before it finally opted for its final name as we know it today, the Rolex Cosmograph Daytona. Are we recording? Yes, we are, mate. This is my job, all right? Are you sure? Is... See what that little circle okay, means. Right. Just wait. It was during this time that the Daytona got probably its most recognisable icon, Paul Newman. Since 1972, till his death in around 2008, Paul Newman was a massive Daytona advocate. And to be honest, we can really credit him for the Daytona craze that we see today. So the modern Daytonas we've got here today are the real hype pieces. Yeah, um, absolutely. The stainless steel being the most prevalent, and that is the reference 116500. These watches, I mean, are available at retail for probably a third, mm. if not more, of the actual resale price. However, we believe that if you are going to fork out all this money for a steel Daytona, you should consider one of the precious metal models. And I want to start by looking at the watch you're actually wearing, the 18 karat white gold Rolex Daytona. This is the reference 116509. It's beautiful. Yep. Oyster case made of 18 karat white gold. Oyster bracelet made out of 18 karat white gold. Yeah. But I think the talking point is that dial. The blue dial, as Rolex call it, a bright blue dial, has pretty much a sun ray effect and it's decorated with these really nice red accents. It's one of my favourite things, the little pop of colour. Very yeah. subtle, you wouldn't notice it from across the room until you really start to look at the watch. They do this with some other ones as well, such as this yellow gold one here. This also has the red accents and I think it just really sets them apart. Yeah. 
But what I really like about that white gold Daytona, you could pull it off as understated. Yeah, it's stealth wealth for sure. It is stealth wealth. All of the Daytonas that we're looking at today have the modern Daytona movement, the 4130. The 4130 movement is a work of art. All the details you'd expect with a modern chronograph movement. We have a 70 hour power reserve beating at 28,800 beats per hour. You've got other technical features as well, such as a ferricone blue hairspring. The other thing that we need to talk about with this white gold Daytona though, is the one thing that sets it apart from the steel one. And I'm talking about weight. The one that you're actually wearing weighs 206 grams, which is just shy of a quarter of a kilo. Yeah. Good maths. <laughs> Thanks, cheers. And what have you got in your hand there, Tom? So, very similar to the white yep, gold yep. one you're wearing. Yep. I'm actually holding the yellow gold 116508 solid 18 karat yellow gold yep. Daytona. Screams wealth. Screams wealth. That, it's literally a money green dial as well. Yeah, exactly yeah. that. So, very similar to yours. Solid 18 karat uh, oyster case. Solid 18 karat oyster bracelet. But it has that... Like you said, that money, that Rolex yeah. green dial. Similar to the hype pieces we've seen with the Hulk. Yeah. Anything with a green dial that Rolex offer, people get excited. Do you know what the nickname for this watch is? No. It's nicknamed the John Mayer. And I, uh, I, yeah, yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> no, I don't like it. I don't like that. I think it should be nicknamed the Money Daytona. Yeah. 206 grams yeah. in weight. This one, slightly heavier. In the left corner, 207 okay. grams. Yeah, nice. That one gram makes all the yeah, difference. Yeah, yeah. Again, we're talking about the 4130 movement, and this one was actually released in 2016. The most important thing I want to ask is, if you were going to buy one from an AD or on a, a dealer's website, yep. which one would you choose? Out of these two? Yeah, out of these two. We're not got to the daddy I, I, yet. I would choose. I would choose the white gold, just because I think, for me personally, as much as I'd love to wear the gold watch, it is a little bit gaudy. You really have to commit to wearing that piece. Yeah. Whereas this can be worn in a lot more occasions throughout day-to-day -day life in my opinion. Going out for dinner with the family, being dressed up in a nice suit, um, because it's not instantly out there with the gold. Although there is definitely a difference between the white gold and steel. Yeah. Even without putting them side by side, you will notice. I just think this one would do it for me a little bit better. I have to agree. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think that is probably one of the most versatile Daytonas. The blue face as well. Yeah, the blue dial completely sells it. This one's my favorite. Yeah, I'm, I'm wearing the white gold one now. We've had a little switch around. If and I could pick any of the three that we're talking about, yeah. it would be this one. It's actually got me really excited. I mean, I'm comparing the two, yeah. and I must be honest, that's the daddy. Yeah, this is the daddy for this sure. This is the daddy. What have you got there? Go on, tell them. This is a Rolex Daytona 116506 in platinum. So, what I absolutely love about this... Oh, mate, it's so good. The ice blue dial. The ice blue dial is... Well, everyone makes blue dials, and it's tends to be that same deep tone, yeah. like a, a deep yeah. ocean blue. Similar to this. Sim very similar to that, and there's a reason that's so popular, because it's beautiful. Yeah. But this, paired with burgundy, a colour we barely see on watches. I mean, mm. we've seen it on the Gold Speedmaster. Yes, we one have. One of the first ones I, I come to reference. There'll be a smattering of them out there, but it's just fantastic. Rolex like to give the ice blue dial to platinum pieces because they say it complements the platinum. And I get that. It really does. When you compare the white yeah, gold yeah. to the platinum, you can see that icy blue finish to the metal. The bezel's an interesting talking point. So burgundy, Rolex call it chestnut brown. Whatever it's you not want chestnut to brown. It. But this was, first of all, the first Daytona with a ceramic bezel. Which interesting. Is the, which is the predecessor to the ceramic steel models we see today. Yep. But when Rolex were asked why they chose to do this, there was all these rumours going around. And one of the rumours, believe it if you will, the reason why they chose brown and ice blue, ice blue is meant to represent Paul Newman's eyes. <laughs> oh, nice. And the brown was meant to represent his hair. Oh, uh, Paul Newman sells as well. Yeah, mm, yeah. Exactly eyes and hair. that, eyes, eyes and, and hair. hair. So yeah. if you want to wear Paul Newman's face. Yeah, yeah, however, yeah. I, I don't think that's the talking point. The, I think it's so unique. There is, and I know we've obviously. This mentioned. is one of the first Daytonas I saw in person. Really? And it's left a big imprint on me. Really? I originally, from photos and things, I, I decided I didn't really like Daytonas that much. Mm. I saw this, and my perception changed completely. You're a very lucky man to see that as your first Daytona. Yeah, yeah, I used to work a good job. This bad boy, this little fatty, weighs <laughs> in at 286 grams. So that it's is. A, it's a BBW, a big, beautiful watch. Oh. But 286 grams, and this one with a value yep. of, I think I can comfortably say, over 100k. 
But that is, as I referenced earlier, literally over a quarter of a kilo of precious metal on your wrist. How comfortable does it feel? I could quite easily forget about this within a couple of minutes of wearing it yeah. on my wrist. Not in the sense of presence, it's got loads of presence, but mm -hmm. I, I just mean there's there's no there's no awareness, there's no annoyance. It it fits like a glove. I think the other thing that Rolex had, which I'm so glad they did, they kept it these at 40 millimeter. Yeah, yeah. All of the ones we've looked at today are 40 millimeter, which, as I've said before in previous it's videos, probably the biggest they should go. It's the biggest they should go. This is perfect at 40, and I know, I just worry that the next ones they do will be 41, 42. I think they'll ruin it. I think they should keep it at this yeah. 40 mil. If anything, the next one they should do, they should go back. 37 mil. Oh, I would be on that like a tramp on chips. You'd have to know some ADs really, really well. Yeah. So if you're in the market for a Daytona, really consider not just rushing into stainless steel because mm. that's what everyone else does and it's the safe, normal option. Yeah. Because I really think if you're gonna go for one of these pieces, you are way better putting your money into something with a little bit of spice, um, a little bit something different about it. And I really think it's a great conversation piece and just, just cherry on top to owning a Rolex Daytona. We have to give all the credit today for these beautiful watches to our friends at the Watch Boutique at the heart of the Shires. So I just want to say a thank you to Dan, yeah. a thank you to the team at the Watch Boutique for allowing us to get hands on with these pieces. And if you are in the market for any of these, head over to the Watch Boutique and he'll be able to help. And if you're in the market on the hunt for a Rolex, also head on over to whatsonwatches.co.uk where we can help you find your next piece. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, we'll see you soon.